um, blood flow, you need a force which is specifically yung pressure para dumalo yung dugo sa ugat natin. Kung walang pwersa, if there's no force, specifically the pressure that is being exerted and given uh, during the pumping of the heart, hindi po dadalo yung dugo sa ugat natin. Okay? So ngayon, hindi siya makakarating sa mga iba't ibang organs, sa kidney, sa heart, sa brain, uh, uh, sa lungs. So hindi yun makakadaloy. So kailangan ng uh, pwersa para dumalo yung dugo. Ngayon, yung pwersa po na tumutulong sa dugo para dumaloy, yun yung blood pressure. Okay? Blood pressure is not the blood itself. Okay? Hindi yung dugo mismo ang blood pressure. Blood pressure is yung pwersa na meron dun sa ating dugo para tulungan siyang dumaloy. That is what blood pressure is in simplest explanation. Naintindihan? Okay? So, why there is a so-called high and low blood pressure? And of course, a normal blood pressure. So, technically, you only need to have a normal flow. Hindi mo kailangan na sobrang bagal, hindi mo kailangan na sobrang bilis. Okay? So, you need to have a um, normal blood pressure. Okay? So, we have two types of blood pressure. So, meron po tayong tinatawag uh, na systolic blood pressure and your diastolic blood pressure. So, when these two blood pressure happens, take note as as I have said earlier that the function of the heart is to pump blood. Okay? So, ganito ang movement ng heart. Okay? Kung nagpa-pump. If the, okay, if the heart is constricted, kaya po nagpa-pump siya, so ganyan. Yan ang trabaho niya para makapump ng blood. So, if the heart is constricted, that is when the first blood pressure happens, yung systolic blood pressure. Kapag nag-relax naman yung heart, okay, nag-relax, constrict, relax, constrict, relax. Pag naka-relax yung heart, that is when the second blood pressure or the so-called diastolic blood pressure happens. Okay? But those two blood pressures happens when the blood is uh, when the heart is pumping blood to deliver uh, blood to the different parts of the body. Okay? Take note, um, lagi pong nauuna ang systolic blood pressure. In your measurement, the systolic blood pressure will always be the first and it will always be the higher number. Hindi pwedeng baliktad yan. Okay, why? Because the, the, the first pressure that will be exerted by the heart when it is constricted, that is the highest pressure. Then it will be diminished slowly as the heart is, uh, as the heart relaxes. So meaning, the blood pressure also will fall or will decrease. Okay, so sabihin nyo kung gusto nyo ipaulit, kung hindi naintindihan, okay? para pwede nating i-reiterate. So, take note, you have your systolic blood pressure and your diastolic blood pressure, which happens during the contraction or during the pumping. O, sa gagamit na tayo ng simplest one, during the pumping of the heart. Yan. Okay. So, wait lang. I-share natin to ng merong ano. So let I have a let's have a short uh, clip so that you would understand more what blood pressure is. So please give a feedback kung na may naririnig kayo at kung na play yung video. <coughs> in my body, they'd be 95,000 kilometers long. And every day, they carry the equivalent of over 7,500 liters of blood. 
though that's actually the same four or five liters recycled over and over, delivering oxygen and precious nutrients like glucose and amino acids to the body's tissues. All that blood exerts a force on the muscular walls of the blood vessels. That force is called blood pressure, and it rises and falls with the phases of the heartbeat. It's highest during systole, when the heart contracts to force blood through the arteries. This is your systolic blood pressure. When the heart is at rest between beats, blood pressure falls to its lowest value, the diastolic pressure. A typical healthy individual produces a systolic pressure between 90 and 120 millimeters of mercury, and diastolic pressure between 60 and 80. Taken together, a normal reading is a bit less than 120 over 80. The blood traverses the landscape of the body through the pipes of the circulatory system. In any plumbing system, several things can increase the force on the walls of the pipes, the properties of the fluid, extra fluid, or narrower pipes. So if the blood thickens, a higher pressure is needed to push it, so the heart will pump harder. A high salt diet will lead to a similar result. The salt promotes water retention, and the extra fluid increases the blood volume and blood pressure. And stress, like the fight or flight response, releases hormones like epinephrine and norepinephrine that constrict key vessels, increasing the resistance to flow and raising the pressure upstream. Blood vessels can usually handle these fluctuations easily. Elastic fibers embedded in their walls make them resilient. But if your blood pressure regularly rises above about 140 over 90, what we call hypertension, and stays there, it can cause serious problems. That's because the extra strain on the arterial wall can produce small tears. When the injured tissue swells up, substances that respond to the inflammation, like white blood cells, collect around the tears. Fat and cholesterol floating in the blood latch on too, eventually building up to form a plaque that stiffens and thickens the inner arterial wall. This condition is called atherosclerosis, and it can have dangerous consequences. If the plaque ruptures, a blood clot forms on top of the tear, clogging the already narrowed pipe. If the clot is big enough, it can completely block the flow of oxygen and nutrients to cells downstream. In vessels that feed the heart, that will cause a heart attack when oxygen-deprived cardiac muscle cells start to die. If the clot cuts off blood flow to the brain, it causes a stroke. Dangerously clogged blood vessels can be widened by a procedure called an angioplasty. There, doctors thread a wire through the vessel to the obstructed site, and then pass a deflated balloon catheter over the wire. When the balloon is inflated, it forces the passageway open again. Sometimes a rigid tube called a stent is placed in the vessel to help hold it open, letting the blood flow freely to replenish the oxygen-starved cells downstream. Staying flexible under pressure is a tough job for arteries. The f and, okay, so if you can see on that <coughs> video that it is showing Paano ba nang uh, paano ba yung uh, nangyayari during uh, sa katawan natin during the blood pressure, okay? And there are also factors bakit ang mga tao is merong may mataas na blood pressure, meron ding um mababa, okay? Because that would depend on the pressure na nailalagay or yung pressure na present doon sa dugo habang dumadaloy. So what contribute uh, what, what contributes to a high uh, pressure uh, to our blood. So, gaya nung discuss dun sa video, if you have like um, um, ano yan? accumulation of uh, plaques, clot, that would narrow yung uh, blood vessels na dadaanan ng dugo. So, syempre, kung mas maskip yung daanan, mas kailangan mo ng mataas na pressure. So, tataas yung BP mo. Okay? Or kung sakaling, kung, pero kung normal naman, so hindi mo kailangan ng sobrang taas ng pressure para makadali yung dugo. So, you'll have a normal blood pressure. So, tumataas ang blood pressure ng isang tao, that depends on several factors. Okay? It can be a disease, it can be stress, it can be um, 
presence of plaque or clot o kung saan dumadalo yung dugo. Okay? So, yun na explanation bakit pumataas ang blood pressure. Kasi 